If I can take my frustration and voice it, I have a funny feeling that there's millions of people that have that same frustration that were overlooked. I'm in the hope business. So I actually saw this at um, at TIFF. Uh, I'm a huge, oh, yeah? yeah, I'm a huge Stallone fan. Um, I've interviewed him uh, a couple of times. I've been lucky enough to interview him a few times. And um, I run a show on, on Joe Blow Originals, our, our YouTube channel called uh, Sylvester Stallone Revisited, where basically I'm examining all of his movies in these kind of 20 minute retrospective oh, wow. reviews. Yeah, and I just did, I think I just did Get Carter. Actually, I just wrapped it. That's what I've gotten to about 2000, but I've done all of his movies so far and I'm a, a massive fan. So I was very excited to see the documentary and I really liked it. I thought that it was, you know, an, an, an excellent, an excellent kind of introduction to the man for, for people that maybe don't really realize kind of how deep his career goes. I think the younger people, they, they they look at, you know, some of his, they maybe know him more for his more recent stuff and they don't know kind yeah. of how big he was. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to ask you, what's your experience like with Stallone? Were you always a fan? I, I assume so, right? My, my connection with uh, Sylvester Stallone was the early days of film, of mm -hmm. going to movies and, and, and also the beauty of, you know, growing up in a VHS generation and having the opportunity to rewatch your favorite films and stumbling upon Paradise Alley in my <laughs> early youth and wondering what's this about, you know. Um, so I, I had that understanding that I would hold on to when making this film of like what the Rocky film meant to me when I first saw it, um, and then and then later on as an adult I would go go towards his films, um, but I don't think I really grasped the full experience of the artist and and the journey until i started talking to him and having that time in the room where i realized that his cinema was unpacking so much of his life that these characters like rocky and rambo went far beyond just my understanding of the narratives that they were deeply connected to him examining these ideas and themes that he would chase his whole life, which is hope and 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 also a sort of redemption uh, from some of the experiences that he uh, went through as a as as a kid. Well, I mean, I think one of the things about Stallone that people don't really get necessarily is kind of how unlike somebody like like Schwarzenegger or a lot of his contemporaries, Stallone was always in, in a lot of ways the auteur, right? Like he was the one who generated his material. He created Rocky. He made, he didn't create Rambo, but he made Rambo what it was. It was very different on the page than it was when he was done with it. And I don't think people realize like how much of his own stamp is on his work and, and, and how and how deep a lot of it goes, like you said, you know, it, a lot of it is in some ways kind of autobiographical, right? Absolutely. I I don't think, I, I think there's a whole, there is an audience that doesn't understand the power of Sylvester Stallone's screenwriting, the writer, the importance and the rhythm and the pure jazz of his dialogue that would come across in some of the interviews. And, and I remember being in his office and him thumbing through notebook upon notebook where he was handwriting the, the script for Expendables or Rocky, like the the unpacking and also the this, this storytelling he was so dedicated to um, as a, in the craft of filmmaking, but also he was getting at bigger ideas that, that I, I came to understand, which, um, you know, he was chasing in these characters a place in the world. He had to create Rocky because the world wasn't giving him that shot, it wasn't giving him that opportunity as an actor or a screenwriter. And and it was really a, an important thing to, to unpack that with the man himself that went beyond sound bites. So my dialogue with him um, in that room, his office, which is filled with all this memorabilia, it would start with maybe a conversation about Expendables, he'd show me a script, he'd reference Rocky and go up to the bookshelf and pull down another notebook. All of it was demonstrating 
an artist that I felt like was never shown before, a filmmaker that was not understood, a man um, who in many ways was fighting this perception of, of, of being just a boxer or an action figure. Uh, you know, the filmmaker watching the, all, the, all the films and, and seeing his influence on sometimes the dialogue in Fist or, or the, his compositions or his, his, his editing, uh, it was amazing to go through that body of work and examine both the man and, and the filmmaker. I'm glad you mentioned his editing because um, that is one of the things that I've, I've noticed the most when doing the retrospective show is that he was able to kind of he anticipated a lot of of the of 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 the kind of the way that movies were going in some of his '80s stuff, and they have a really kind of distinctive stamp to them. Um, and I think that that's kind of what keeps a lot of his movies they've aged better than a lot of other movies from that era has because they're edited in a much more modern way, almost kind of the, M the like the MTV style. He was one of the few people that really seemed to understand the rhythms of it. You know, when you watch Rocky IV, it's a pretty, pretty brilliantly edited movie. You know, and I would say the same thing even for movies that he didn't direct, you could see his stamp on them like Cobra. Um, and, you know, even we did a video on Staying Alive recently, which is, you know, it's a silly movie, but it's, but it's very, very well edited. And um, that is kind of a thing about him that I feel that people don't really necessarily grasp. But like he really understands, in a lot of ways, the language of cinema. A hundred percent. I'm I'm an editor, and I, I love talking with him uh, at times about the cutting and and the structure, and whether it was staying alive or just the power of the cut. He completely understands that, and the, and you you can see elements of it when he's directing. Paradise Alley or or Rocky Two, that he understood composition and 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 editing in a way that each time uh, he would return to these franchises of Rocky or Rambo, he was pushing it. Mm -hmm. Like he, he was never, if you if you if you start with the first Rocky film um, and then you go towards the end, you could just see that the language of filmmaking, each one of them, he's he's pushing it to a place that I would have to agree with you that it is, it is a bit timeless mm -hmm. because it does have a, a cutting style that we live in currently. And, and, and it also it's in its root. It's, it's not um, so flashy that it takes you away from the themes yeah. of the story, even his characters. Uh, I love the documentary. He said at one point, I admit that the characters were flashy, whether it's Mr. T or Dolph, it's just, they they served a purpose they 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 were bigger than life and that that worked that worked for him in the moment um so uh, the filmmaker in, in me would just always love going back to the room and 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 having him look at the films and in the, in the doc i actually filmed him watching the movies and and that was a really powerful moment because he would talk about um, in Rocky Balboa, he talked about sometimes like not getting a scene right and adding a word, which really showed that side of the writer that he understood the power of a certain rhythm and, and the editing, that adding an ad lib will just change the tempo. Um, so there's many sides to, to, to geek out over uh, being in the room with him and talking film. Well, and, and I think one of the things that I, I kind of get frustrated about with a lot of kind of modern action heroes is that, you know, I was watching, I mean, I, I, I you know, actually kind of Expendables 4 recently, and I find that, you know, a lot of, a lot of them, they'll take, they, they'll just be, you can't defeat them in a fight, right? They're just, they're, they're invulnerable, right? They're just these machines, nobody ever lands a blow on them. And I think that what's always been great about Stallone is that he'll take his licks, right? He, he's not afraid to be vulnerable emotionally and physically, right? And I think that that's what always made him and that's what always made Rocky such a hero because Rocky doesn't win in the first movie. And it's not always a given that he's gonna win. He doesn't win in Rocky Balboa either. You know, and, and I think that that's what has really made a lot of his characters endure because people see the underdog in themselves and he, he it, it, they, they see themselves in that character and they understand that winning isn't necessarily the only thing that's important it's the fact that you know you went the distance and you gave it all you got and, and there's really nobody else quite like him out there these days it seems i mean the, the the notion of going the distance the notion of hope the notion of being vulnerable those were all the things that he created with his own pen 
-hmm. and they are also a powerful force when you look at them from the context of understanding what he went through as a child so in the power of writing a, a character like mickey you suddenly have a father figure you have somebody who's a mentor he created a universe that lets the viewer step in to the movie in a very real way because it's not beyond our world it's it's a person that has failings and fears in the very first rocky he has that moment where he has that confessional moment in bed with adrian that he's afraid and he just wants to be somebody and it's like those themes again and again appear but they also are um part of what i understood in my conversations with sly looking at him as an artist are the ingredients and the elements that he uses to not only inspire an audience but to heal from his own experiences of not having certain things like that Mm -hmm. the end of the documentary says in stallone world a boxer gets a chance to be a hero and, and win the fight and the girl but also you know be somebody who can be loved in stallone world there's a soldier who can come home and find a place mm -hmm. the idea of stallone world as a place that gives you hope was a theme that i chased throughout the doc and and had to look at his work all over again and you have to realize I'm sitting and I'm not sitting I'm standing in the room with him and he's throwing all these things at me from his life and then you go back to the movies and they're never the same no because he's he's demonstrating to you a truth in such a way that you go oh my god that's like his father or that was the story of him not being accepted this way or the stare the stare of his dad when he shows the photo to me in the documentary the Rambo character could never be the same. You, you see the essence that he was tapping into. So getting those moments were, were a great thing because you, I was explaining Sly's life. I was tapping into the film history. And also I was getting past the soundbite that Rocky was a great film to make. And yeah. this was the experience. I was getting at the core of the artist, what drives him. And, and I, hope, I hope the viewers connect to it. I hope like a casual fan can step into this. And then the Uber fan too can step into it and just feel like they 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 are inspired by his his journey and they've learned something. When I've I've interviewed him a few times and he's always an amazing interview. And the thing that I've I've kind of when you do a lot of these these kind of junket style interviews, you get like the quick sound bites and stuff like that, and it, and they don't really go much deeper than that. But when you get him, he usually kind of gives you a really thoughtful answer. And and there's and there's something about him is that he really seems engaged by what he's doing he's not the kind of person that just phones something in you know if you watch him in tulsa king and talking about tulsa king he obviously put a lot into it right the fact despite the fact that he's 77 years old right he's not just taking the paycheck he is all in on this character and i i also think that's something that's 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 in, endured about him over the years as an artist and you know i was looking at the exhibition of his paintings at tiff and i thought that those were incredible too because you can see a lot of the themes that are in his movies show up in his paintings right and the kind of his own view of himself as a, as a as a person who's flawed and who has to overcome things and you know ego particularly being one of them you know i thought that was pretty amazing i, I think the paintings are amazing that way on how he literally is you know tearing up the iconic imagery of his characters of rocky and rambo how he's painting over them how he's putting mm -hmm. words over um to me it all reflected a, a sense of the man on, and how he challenges himself also the you know through the years i could see this work ethic and and being around him on the set of tulsa king or being around the, him in those interviews this was a man who was constantly working and 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 onto the next project but also looking at his life so you would just step into what i thought was this moving train of of S sylvester stallone world you just grab on and hold on and sort of like keep up with it because he would walk into the room he was like i was working since early this morning on a script and i'm doing this and i'm doing that oh i remember this story i wanted to tell you something and then you're talking about rocky you go to the expendables you're talking about childhood there was no um just laid back soundbite moment with him. 
you had to really know your subject, but also be ready to stay in sync in pocket with him, you know, keep up with the flow. And he, he would go five, six hours straight with me and just talk. And, and by the end of it, we, we both were exhausted. And he gave me that thing that every filmmaker wants, which is trust and time. Yeah. There was no boundaries. There was no, no, no subjects I couldn't approach. Um, and the, you know, the biggest thing was to see him in that space of home and see him go to areas of his life and, and explain it to me in a way that would help me tell his story. That's the trust. And that's, that, that was the biggest gift that he gave me. Were there any of his movies when you were kind of re-examining his work that that kind of took you by surprise as being underrated? I mean, for me, one of the ones that I always return to is, is Nighthawks, right? Which I think is such an atypical Sloan movie because you really kind of see him doing this grittier kind of thing that he never really did again. But you can also see like how well he fit into that world, right? Like if he wanted to, he could do anything he wants, right? Like and he's and he's good in any kind of movie. Um, to me, that's that's a that's a fascinating movie to re-examine. Were there any Were there any for you that you found that when you saw them that were quite this, quite a surprise? Yeah, I did. I did look at um, Paradise Alley in in its yeah. approach to to tapping into this Hell's Kitchen dream world of his childhood. It was very surprising to go back to it because now that I had understanding of his love of film and and also his experiences as a child, I. I and also just the pure ego and ambition he had as a young filmmaker. I knew that singing the theme Paradise song. Alley. Yeah, singing the theme song. It's, <laughs> it's it's a it's an amazing story that way. And going back to it, 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 it was a it was really a different experience than seeing it than my in my youth, mm -hmm. where a lot of things didn't make sense or and it had a surreal quality to it, but it also it showed a filmmaker just pushing all the boundaries, and um, I loved it. I loved it. It was a, it was a, it was a great experience to go back to, and that that and Copland. Mm -hmm. um, I I didn't spend a ton of time on Paradise Sally in the doc, but it it informed me to the filmmaker uh, that Sly was in a way that was that it again reminded me that he's a filmmaker that was not understood. That's the one that Tarantino is always singles out too, right? In, in cinema, cinema speculation, yeah. he wrote a whole chapter about it and he talks yeah. about the movie too. That and Lords of Flatbush. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let me let me ask you, when you're when you're doing something like this for Netflix and you're doing it as a as a feature rather than rather than a limited series, um, is there a lot of stuff that you felt that you had to cut out? Is there is there potential of maybe doing a longer version of this somewhere down the line? Because I, I mean, I, I, it was one of those things I didn't want it to end, but I also got why you know you kept it relatively short because the energy in the style—it's like one of his movies, right? It has that propulsive energy that kind of goes through it. But at the same time, I, I wanted I wanted more in a way, you know. I I I, I can understand the story. Like Sly's story is so big, mm -hmm. and I love to hear that. You wanted more and I, I also love it as a contained narrative film yeah not a series sure. because i i feel like um i feel like there's avenues that could pursue the unpacking of every single chapter that way i was trying to tell a, a story uh about an artist and reflect his body of work but not literally break down every beat of his personal life and Within that, it, it it helps for me hone in on what I felt the important things were and those themes. So when you don't have it as a series, um, you have to really get the film to a place to carry the journey of someone's life. I love the 90 minute challenge mm -hmm. because it's really hard when you have Sylvester Stallone and there's so many things you can be in love with. But I like the impact of of one movie this way and i also know that if someone wants to have some other detail on something it's so easy to explore you know um i'm hoping that this is just a seed to understanding the man better and that it, it will open up a journey that they'll someone will check out the body of work and and explore for themselves
Well, it's like a, it's like one of his movies, though. That's the thing about it, right? It has that same kind of energy. You know, I always I always tell people that a good Stallone movie afterwards, you're like shadow boxing almost because you feel like pumped up, right? It was the same thing when, you know, as kids, we used to watch the Rocky and the Rambos movie. We'd always be like shadow boxing. Sure. Right? And it gave you the sure. same. When I was leaving the screening at TIFF, the public screening, everybody had that kind of same charge, right? Everybody was like, yeah, yeah. Woo! rocky you know sly yeah and it was just it was great i was there with my partner and she was she was the same way too right it gives you that 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 charge you know that that's and it's uplifting i think that's the most important thing because i like most of his work well i'm thrilled i'm thrilled to hear you compare it that to the sly's work that way and it's the idea of hope that's mm -hmm. that's you know it's it's hope hope and 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 the power of change and 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 the belief that you can be in the world in a way that you know, Sly's characters reflected where they, they found peace with, with, with themselves. And also they went through the turmoil of wanting to change and some of the pain, whether it's a Rocky or a Rambo, but ending with the theme of hope. I want the, the, the doc to feel that way. Yeah. So, um, I love, I love that to hear you connected to it that way. And he, the, his films are, are powerful and they, they come with this energy and, um, you yearn for more because for me, I, I, I feel like the message is so strong and so, so needed that you do feel pumped up at the end. And, and, um, yeah, I, I hope the doc captured a little bit of that quality. Well, he's kind of come, and this is my, my last question for you, is he's kind of come full circle in that way, because I can remember a time when Stallone's movies, you know, before he did Rocky Balboa for a while, he had kind of a, you know, a dip in his career. But I think the thing about him that, that's kind of really maintained his legacy is that his films really do hold up well years later when you go back and you revisit them, much more so than a lot of other movies from that era do. Um, and was that something that you found yourself also that like a lot of this stuff really does hold up and it, and it is, you know, especially the Rocky movies, they really do feel timeless to a certain extent, right? Well, I think the key word is timeless. And I do yeah. think going through the body of work that Sly created, that phrase would come to mind where these themes are with us forever. Yeah. The idea of, of wanting to be seen or loved in a certain way, the idea of healing. All, all, all these themes are universal and timeless so that nothing would nothing would pop out um, to take you out of that dream space, this Stallone dream space where things are possible. So yes, maybe the cinema or the look has um, some time and age to it visually with you know some of the feelings of it being more filmed or just some of the music or things like that, those details. But the overarching theme is timeless. And, and, and in some ways you could step back into the Stallone world very easily and, 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 and relate to it now. Um, I think that's what, I think that's the power of his writing and that's the power of him as a filmmaker. And even when he's not directing it, the, the performances come with such intensity and truth that you, you you don't judge it by its error. You, no. you just you believe in the character. You know, it, 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 I was just thinking about Cobra, and you know, there's there's the language of music videos, and there's you know all the stylized lighting of the time. But you believe Sly. You believe that you're in this little universe. Um, that's the power of him as a filmmaker and a writer that I hope to get across and that I witnessed in the room.